seems to be the question of the day going around. Is it ableist to call out narcissistic behaviors? Is this actually a bad thing to be able to put this out there? Well, if you guys are new here, I'm a narcissist. I'm a self or a narcissist on this channel. I'm the founder of Realm Motivations, creator of the NARC app, your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge, access at claritychallenge.net. If you like what we see here when we're talking about narcissism, narcissistic behaviors, narcissistic abuse, my journey in narcissism, please subscribe. Hit that notification and stay tuned for videos with just no BS because that's what I'm here to try to help people understand, get clarity, and also see some of my journey going forward. Okay. Well, some people come out and they say calling out narcissism is bad. Like it's harmful. Like it hurts other people. It, um, you know, stigmatizes and puts them in a box that the narcissist can't get out of and that the narcissist is trapped in this idea and thought that like now all these people think that they're the worst person ever. So as a result, they're not going to change or they're not going to get out or they're not going to have the resources. So the idea is like calling out narcissism is bad. Okay. So I want to talk to you today about what is ableism. Okay. Narcissism as a disability. And then why now? Like, why is this coming up now? And, and who's it coming from? Okay. How's it actually being shown? Okay. So let's dive in. Stick around. It's going to be a fun one. Okay. So when we're talking about ableism, the definition, the idea here is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. So it'd be like the idea of someone who is disabled and being like, hey, we're going to discriminate you for someone who is more abled, okay? We're not going to dive into like the disability piece a ton because that's not my wheelhouse. Narcissism is. So that's where we're going to be, okay? But just trying to give you an idea of what it is. It's the idea of like a form of prejudge, uh, prejudice. Wow. I can't even, can't even communicate. Prejudice or manipulating or marginalizing and left like unaddressed, it can be really, really toxic. You'll see this in the workplace. You'll see this in all different types of society of like, wait a second, like this is geared towards this type of person. And this is geared not towards this type of person. Okay. So it's, it, think of it in the main, main sense as just the idea of like discrimination. Okay. Like discriminating other people. Okay. So prejudice, discrimination, uh, antagonism. So like, you know, bringing this idea of like, I'm going to be really antagonistic towards this other person or like hateful towards this person, all this kind of things. Okay. Um, oftentimes it reinforces this idea that people with disability, that people without disabilities are superior to those with disabilities. Okay. So we're looking at it in that whole aspect. Okay. When we talk about narcissism as a disability, just in the research and, this, and the, the amount of stuff that I did just working on this video and kind of pulling up some stuff, talking about disabilities um, from the Social Security Association, like other stuff like that, trying to understand a little bit about it. It goes into this aspect of identifying some personality and impulse control disorders. And so I'm going to read really quick just a section of it, okay? So it first talks about defining a personality and impulse control disorders. These disorders are characterized by enduring, inflexible, maladaptive, and pervasive patterns of behavior. Onset typically occurs in adolescence or young adulthood. Symptoms and signs may include, but are not limited to, limited to patterns of distrust, Suspiciousness, odd beliefs, social, deta social detachment, discomfort or avoidance, hypersensitivity to negative evaluation, an excessive need to be taken care of, difficulty in making independent decisions, a preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism and control, and inappropriate, intense, impulsive anger and behavioral expression grossly out of proportion to any external um, pro... I mean, I cannot talk today. Pro provocation? Uh, I can't, can't even say it. I know what it is. I just can't even say it. And psychological stressors. All right. Stick with me. We'll get through this. Okay. And the second part is examples of disorders that we evaluate in this category include paranoid, schizoid, schizotopal, borderline, avoidant, dependent, obsessive, compulsive personality disorders, and intermittent explosive disorder. Okay. Sorry. Stick with me, all right? But that was the, the definition that they have on like talking about disabilities, about personality and impulse control disorders. And so in looking at, like, in looking at it, it's like, how are they actually defined? How are they actually known? And it comes up with like two main sections, okay? The first section is medical documentation of a pervasive pattern of one or more of the following. So part of it is 
just think of it this way. The narcissist has to get diagnosed, okay? If they don't get diagnosed, they don't have like some of this anyway. So like there's no documentation. There's no medical documentation of some of this, okay? Here it is. So it's nine things under the medical documentation of pervasive pattern of one or more of the following. Distrust and suspicion of others, detachment from social relationships, disregard for and violation of the rights of others, instability of interpersonal relationships, excessive emotion, emotionality and attention seeking, feelings of inadequacy, excessive need to be taken care of, preoccupation with perfectionism and orderliness, or recurrent impulsive aggressive behavior outbursts. All of that kind of put together, all of those nine, and you, so you need so you need one of those out of there, and the second section here is extreme limitation of one or marked limitation of two of the following areas of mental functioning, okay? Number one is understand, remember, or apply information. So extreme limitation or marked limitation of one or of, of one or a marked limitation of two, okay? Understand, remember, or apply information, interact with others, concentrate, persist, or maintain pace, adapt, or manage oneself. A lot of those aspects in that second one First one, I'm like, okay, I can see different pieces of that. We could pull different pieces of narcissism out of that. The second one, a lot of times we're not seeing a lot of these narcissists being people that are unfunctioning in society. They're normally the people that seem to be winning. They normally see them people that are like successful, whether that's at business or at you know being with other people or like politics or like whatever. We normally see an aspect that like there's a drive that a lot of times makes them very successful in different aspects of life. It's not people that are showing up in the workplace unfunctioning. Now there is narcissism and there is narcissists that you know sit on the couch and leech off other people. Totally get that. Okay, but uh, as a whole, a lot of times what we see is people that are successful. You know, I, I talk to people in one-on-ones and they're like, they make a ton of money. Like they're so smart, like all these different things. And it's like, okay, like there's not this aspect that falls under some of this category of it being a disability that narcissist is a disability in that regards. Okay. Um, a lot of what it talks about going through disability stuff is the idea of impairment to work. And uh, that classifies a lot of it in like the working aspect and like what's actually going on there. I'm not trying to dive into all that because that is not my wheelhouse, like I said. Narcissism is. So when we're talking about this, let's go off the dis discriminating part, okay? Are people discriminate discriminating against narcissists? Yeah, I would say a lot of times people are. Are people bashing narcissists? Yes, I would say a lot of times people are, okay? Why? Because of the hurt and because of the things that have been done to them. Totally get it. The phrase hurt people hurt people is not accurate. Unhealed people hurt people. And we see that a lot of times, whether that's from internet trolls, whether that's from people stalking, whether that's from people attacking, like whatever it might be, happens all across the board. But then the question is, okay, what about my channel? Like I'm on social media, I'm talking about narcissist behaviors. Am I discriminating? Am I bashing them? I think no. And the reason why is because I am one. I am a narcissist. So I'm not coming out and being like, oh, these awful people, like, hey, these awful people, that also means me. That also means the things that I've done. That also means the lives that I've hurt. That also means the wife that I've betrayed. That means the lies that I've told to her face and gaslit her about. That means the affairs that I've had. That means so many different things of the abusive natures and the nine characteristics of narcissism that I've exemplified all of them at one time or another. And you need to understand that I'm not here yelling narcissistic abuse just to bash a bunch of people. I'm saying this has been me. This is what I struggle with. This is the mindset of what's actually going on. And I've never turned down meeting with a narcissist and trying to give them the tools and help them move forward and progress and change. The majority of them never come back. The majority of them are unwilling to confront who they actually are. So I come on here, I tell my story, I give my perspective, and I try to provide clarity for people who don't understand narcissism, for people who don't understand what's actually going on in the mindset, for people who don't understand that the narcissist oftentimes doesn't care about them because it's not about the other person. It's about me. That's the thought process every single time. So you know what? At the end of the day, let's throw out the label. Let's get rid of narcissism. We, like, we won't even talk about narcissism, Okay. But you know what I can talk about? I can talk about all the toxic and abusive behaviors because that's really what matters. 
Too many people look for a label to define someone so that they can justify leaving or they feel better about it instead of just acknowledging the truth. The truth of how that person is treating them. The truth of how that person is treating them like shit and they're unwilling to leave because they still have hope because they've been future faked or love bombed or anything like that to be able to get to the place thinking like maybe they can change. But I'm like, you've got six, eight, 20 years showing that they're unwilling to acknowledge and even start the process to change. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. They're off the label. If we don't bring up narcissism, are we calling them out? Are we being this awful person by labeling them? No, because we're not labeling it with narcissism. We're saying, hey, uh, you lied. That means you're a liar. Hey, you weren't honest. You were unfaithful to your wife, to your partner, to your spouse. That means you're a cheater, period. At the end of the day, we're on this platform to try to call out toxic behaviors and give clarity to people who are confused about what is actually going on because they've been gaslit and manipulated into believing that they're the problem when they're actually not, or they're the problem before reactive abuse when they're not the ones that even started that whole process. Okay, so I want to finish this up. Why are people bringing this up now? And furthermore, like, who are the people that are bringing up? Like, how is this actually like going on? I think the people that are bringing this up oftentimes are furthering enabling narcissists to play as victims and are giving them a cop out. I think they can change behavior. I think they can modify. I think they can understand how not to be abusive to a lot of people. Yes, there is pathological. There is like a high spectrum. There is a low spectrum. It's all on there. I still think people can work on it. I don't think there is one category that is like so beyond any modification at all. I don't think that's realistic. I don't think it's realistic based on society. I don't think it's realistic based on humans. Who's bringing it up? Number one, I think people that believe narcissists are incapable of getting help. Majority of narcissists won't get help because they're willing to be honest and they'd run from the truth and they run from their shame versus actually confronting it and changing their behaviors. 100% get that. I think a narcissist is incapable of changing without honesty. So if there's no honesty, incapable of getting help. I'll agree with you 100% there. But I think it needs to have that. If they got honest, if they wanted to be honest, if they started to be honest, if they demonstrated, right? If they demonstrate honesty, something could actually change if they wanted it to. Second people is people that have sympathy and believe that everyone's good. A lot of times there's people that are very naive thinking that everyone is out there to like love and have everybody like be like wonderful and they don't realize there's these negative people in the world. There's these people in the world that are actually abusive, harmful, and hurting other people out there, destructive in different relationships. And honestly, they walk through life a little naive. Third one is people that never experienced narcissistic abuse. And really, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And they need to get in line with other people that understand, hey, this stuff is really abusive and it's really harmful. And let's not call it out. Uh, it could be someone else that gets beat up. It could be someone else who gets unalived. Fourth people that end up like saying this, I think a lot of times, are narcissists. Are narcissists that don't like the context. Don't like all these videos that I'm putting out there of like, oh, you're calling me out. Or, oh, I'm not that way. I'm this way. And like, like all these different types of things. And like, you need to understand that like, I didn't like it. When I first saw, one of the first videos I saw about narcissism was from Lee Hammock. I thought it was stupid. I thought the guy was an asshole. I was like, this is retarded. That's not me. The first step was denial of being unwilling to look at anything inside me to see, is there actually something that I need to work on? Is there actually something that I need to change? But I was like, no, I'd rather live without honesty. I'd rather live in a false reality and say, I'm not that. It was a bunch of BS. So, for the narcissists out there that don't like the context or don't like watching my videos, totally fine. I don't care. Go on to someone else's videos. But for people that are watching and they're like, oh, like, I'm calling out narcissistic behavior. That's a bad thing. I want you to understand when I'm calling out narcissists, I'm not doing it in a negative way. I'm saying like, hey, this is what I've been. This is what I've done. And if you want to actually transform your life, Stop whining about how you feel and start actually transforming who you are and what you're doing. Either be a part of the change and own it or stop fucking whining about your perspective. I'm on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, 
development. To help people transform their lives and find healing, purpose, and direction in a way that they've never found before. Hope you guys stick around.